Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Welcome in to today's edition of Just the Truth. Lots to cover. Here's what we're going to hit on today. The judge in former President Trump's New York civil fraud case has ordered the court to monitor the Trump organization's finances for the next three years. Also, Democrat New York Attorney General Letitia James recently took the first steps towards seizing President Trump's assets, according to public records that have been filed. Illegal immigrants stormed the U.S. border in El Paso yesterday, knocking over guards amid a standoff over the new Texas law. Do you have an iPhone? There may be some changes on the way. Apple's facing a wide-ranging antitrust lawsuit from the Department of Justice and 16 state and district attorneys general focused on its dominance in the smartphone market. Remember the story of the high school student Cameron Blazik I talked with you about? He was, uh, goes to East Central High School in St. Leon, Indiana, and administrators there attempted to stop him from displaying the American flag in the back of his pickup truck. You remember this story? Well, his story has a happy ending. I'm going to share that with you. As well as your comments on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-4639. Send those comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a voice message. Emails always welcome. Joey at joeyhudson.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth! Shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Let's jump right in. Senior Fox Business Correspondent Charlie Gasparino blasted the civil fraud case against Donald Trump in New York while nonetheless referring to him as a quote blowhard whose net worth isn't what the former president said it is, according to Gasparino. Trump has until Monday to post a $454 million bond to appeal a massive civil judgment against him in that amount, including the interest he'll have to pay on it. After he's found liable for defrauding banks and insurers in this this totally uh, fictitious lawsuit that this activist attorney general, who was elected by campaigning on the fact, I'm going to get Trump. This week, his attorneys told the appellate court, that none of the more than 30 underwriters that they had contacted are willing to underwrite, to to backstop that amount of money. There's been a lot of talk of Trump potentially holding a, quote, fire sale, but liquidating hundreds of billions in assets in such a little time is probably inconceivable, probably not going to happen. And it's not fair to Trump or anyone, for that matter, to have to take that kind of loss because of some activist attorney general. He's, he's built his, his life, his father, his family has, has built this empire, this real estate empire in New York, and she's trying to just wipe it out single-handedly. Gasparino makes a good point saying that it's a scary public policy implication that an attorney general like this can essentially try to bankrupt a guy trying to run for president because she's from a different party over what is actually a non-crime. Here's Gasparino. Uh, I mean, listen, there's two stories here. There's the scary public policy implications of an attorney general essentially trying to bankrupt uh, a guy that's running for presidency because she's from a different uh, party over a non-crime. And let's face it, you know, Mm -hmm. he got a loan from Deutsche Bank. Donald Trump is a blowhard, let's face it, but... The bank did its own due diligence on the property in question and didn't have a problem. And he paid all the money back or at least is good on the loan. So victimless crime, that's a real scary thing for every business in New York, that they can be subject to that. And they can under something known as the Martin Act, which she enforces as New York attorney general. Then there's the question of how this is going to unravel in three days. And it's it's scary because you, you, you really don't know. And he you know, Donald Trump owns a lot of signature properties here in the city, in Westchester County in Florida. Uh, And, you know, here's the thing, and it gets back to Donald's bloviating. You know, eight years ago, he said he was worth $10 billion. 
He's clearly not worth $10 billion. He doesn't have the cash to do this. His properties, who knows what they're worth? They're not worth much on a fire sale. So if she really wants to come in and shut this stuff down, theoretically, she can. And she, now, one of the cards that Trump could play, and it's something I broke on Neil Cavuto's show, Your World, the other day, is that she could come in. They could say, OK, here are the keys. Take Trump Tower, you know, take this thing, take the golf courses in Westchester and figure them out because there are so many leases and subleases and limited partners. Figure out which part is mine and which part is Joe Blow's. Right. And good luck because you don't have half the staff to do that. And while you're doing that, we're going to appeal this stupid rule and we're going to, you know, at least get a lesser judgment, hopefully, from a judge uh, that's not totally in the tank for Letitia James. If the Trump organization... Donald Trump himself does not post bond by Monday. A.G. James says that she will begin seizing his assets, and according to public records, she has taken the first step in doing so. James filed judgments against Trump, his sons, and the Trump Organization on March 6th with the clerk's office in Westchester County, where Trump owns a golf resort, private estate called Seven Springs, according to Bloomberg News. Judge Arthur uh, Engeron issued the judgment in February, finding that Trump must pay the $455 million in James's lawsuit, which alleges that he perp- uh, perpetrated a, a financial fraud by overestimating the value of his assets to obtain, uh, obtain loans and uh, favorable insurance rates. Trump's legal team wrote in a filing er- earlier this week that he could not post bond in his appeal, moving to stay the execution of the judgment. Trump has four days to come up with the amount before the March 25th deadline. Trump's attorneys wrote, The amount of the judgment with interest exceeds $464 million, and very few bonding companies will consider a bond of anything approaching that magnitude. In short, a bond of this size is rarely, if ever, seen. Meanwhile, speaking of Judge uh, Ingeron, uh, he, he ruled, of course, in the civil case that ultimately handed Trump this, this huge judgment. Ingeron wrote yesterday, based on the court's finding in its February 16th order, the court ordered the continued monitoring of defendants' financial and accounting practices and disclosures, including an enhanced role for the monitor for a period of no less than three years, as well as the appointment of an independent director of compliance. Basically, he's ordering the Trump organization to allow state, uh, the, the state official to monitor their business for the next three years. This is absurd. Re- retired federal judge Barbara Jones, who has monitored the Trump organization's finances as part of a preliminary injunction in 2022, will continue her role for three more years. The monitor will allow reviews of the organization's internal accounting records, record-keeping, financial reporting policies, and more. Now think about this, and particularly those of you who are business owners. What an overreach. What, what if you had to, to check in with the government every month, show them your P&L, and, and let them snoop around in your business for three years? The Trump Organization will be required to provide the monitor with monthly bank statements, notify the monitor at least five business days before major cash or asset transfers, so they got to notify them five days before they move money from one place to another, and inform the monitor about debt restructuring or any types of payments. More relevant to the case, the organization must also disclose efforts to obtain surety bonds. Quarterly reports on these and other financial data points will be prepared and required by the court. The order from uh, Ingeron State's defendants shall not evade the terms of this monitorship order by transferring assets, reincorporating existing business entities and other forms of jurisdictions, modifying entity ownership, or any other form of restructuring or change in corporate form. Jones will also be able to advise the court on orders to change operations within the Trump organization. Basically, she's going to be just standing over their shoulder monitoring everything they do. Do you ever think why these judges are not this curious about the business affairs of Hunter Biden, of James Biden, of the entire Biden crime family? Wonder why they don't put a monitor on them. Why don't they monitor what Hunter Biden is doing? 
I think you know the answer to that. Uh, Miss James, in response that Trump did not supply evidence he could not cover the bond, said if defendants were truly unable to provide an undertaking, they at a minimum should have cons- consented to their real estate interest held by the Supreme Court to satisfy the judgment. And you know that there's this theory that that uh, Mr. Gasparino referred to a minute ago that Trump might just hand over his assets and say, hey, take Trump Tower, you operate it. Take the golf courses, you operate it. We live in scary times that our federal government allows, and, and, and the state governments, you, 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 got, uh, you got New York, you have this rogue prosecutor in Georgia, uh, the one, one in Florida, attacking the front runner, the, the GOP front runner for president of the United States. Wow. Yesterday, illegal immigrants stormed the U.S. border in El Paso. They knocked over guards amid a standoff over the Texas law. Now, now this is a, a challenge. We, here, you know, Biden would like for us to think that these illegals don't mean any harm. Yet they storm or tried to storm our border yesterday. This was a test of the Texas National Guard and what they would do. When you, have, uh, when you have foreign entities doing this, this, this is when I hope and I pray that Texas Governor Greg Abbott will not back down. And I don't think he is, do you? Th- this lar- have you seen some of the videos of, of this large group, hundreds, trying to storm, uh, trying to, 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 to literally force their way into the country? Is that not an invasion? I got the details coming up first. Portions of today's show brought to you by Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition. If you want to lose weight, if you want to get healthy as we head into the summer, boy, have we not had some beautiful days. Now, of course, we got some rain coming in. Uh, not not so beautiful for the next uh, couple of days. But, boy, this week has been wonderful. I've been out on the lake some in the boat, on the jet skis. If you want to fit into that swimsuit a little bit better <laughs> uh, this this summer, then you need to call right now. Write this down, 864-252-4925. Call Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition. I sure am glad I met Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at the Greenville office of Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition almost four years ago because I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might say. That's why I say if you call today by summer, early summer, you can have lost 10, 20, 30 pounds or more. It took me about three months to lose uh to lose 30 pounds, Th- three to four months. I started in uh, right after 4th of July in 2020. By November or so, I had lost just about 30 pounds. Uh, I-, I dropped a few more before Christmas of that year. And here's the good news, and here's the important part of Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition and the way Dr. Ashley Lucas designed this. It's not a fad diet. It's not a diet at all. They're going, to get, they're going to give you the skills. They're going to teach you how to maintain that. Their lifetime maintenance program is worth what you're going to pay for this. 864-252-4925 to lose weight for the last time. You can also go online to myphdweightloss.com. Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. you got this large group of illegal immigrants bursting through razor wire, surging towards the border wall, in El Paso, Texas yesterday, in what became a chaotic scene in which guards were knocked over just as the state's anti-illegal immigration law is being held up in the courts. You don't, you don't think that they have a network of communication? That, that these people were trying to force their way into our country to make a statement? Video taken by the New York Post showed dozens of adult males ripping away razor wire that was set up by the state and charging past Texas National Guardsmen. They then ran towards a section of the border wall where they were blocked from entering uh, further. A Texas law enforcement source told the media that the group consisted of over 300 illegal immigrants and about 100 adult males rushed the soldiers, and one has been arrested so far for assaulting a soldier. 
The melee began when one family unit was allowed through. The source said that more arrests are likely coming for destruction of property and assault. At one point, one soldier can be heard in the post videos yelling at the illegal immigrants from the other side of the fence, get the F back. It, it got violent. Brandon Judd, president of the National Border Patrol Council, told the media that all migrants are now apprehended and agents were going through video to see who assaulted the soldiers. They'll be processed for deportation, but maintain the ability to claim asylum still, which is crazy in itself. The fact that they, that they stormed these guardsmen and they're going to be allowed to apply for asylum? Do you think that they'll go through this video the way they went through the video of January the 6th to, to try to really determine who, who uh, stormed these National Guardsmen? Yesterday's event, of course, marks the latest flashpoint at the border in a three-year crisis as it, that has been or has seen record numbers of illegals hitting the border with 2.4 million in fiscal year 23 alone. In an aerial view, immigrants pass through, you can see them passing through the razor wire that was set up by Texas. Texas has implemented, as you know, a number of border security measures trying to, to stop the flow of illegal immigration, most of which have faced opposition from the Biden administration. The razor wire has been cut by federal officials so that the illegals don't have to cut it themselves. This, this all led to a lawsuit. Meanwhile, the administration sued Texas' deployment of buoys in the Rio Grande as well. You, you, you've seen this uh, as part of Go Governor Abbott's attempt to keep people on the other side of the river. As you know, this week has been uh, back and forth. The, the Supreme Court briefly allowed Texas' anti-illegal immigration law, which allows police to arrest illegals. The Supreme Court allowed it to go into effect. Despite a legal challenge from the Biden administration, the law was kicked back to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals within hours of the Supreme Court's decision, blocked again while the Biden administration is doing everything they can. They claim that the law encroaches upon federal responsibility over immigration enforcement. Well, that's the problem, and that's what Governor Abbott is saying, is the federal government is not trying to enforce so it's put them into a situation where they're going to have to enforce our border laws if, te if, if the federal government will not. White House Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre said in a statement this week, SB4 will not only make communities in Texas less safe, it will also burden law enforcement and sow chaos and confusion at our southern border. SB4 is just another example of Republican officials politicizing the border while blocking real solutions. It's maddening what this woman says sometimes, isn't it? Just maddening that she can stand there and say that, that this law, which allows Texas law enforcement to arrest illegals, that that makes Texas citizens less safe. How can she say that with a straight face? Texas has argued that it's had to act because the administration's not doing its job, which is the truth. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said this week, number one, we're facing such dangerous situations. Number two, Joe Biden, through his actions, is violating the laws of the United States of America. Texas has said that it still has the authority to stop those coming across illegally by using trespass laws. Governor Abbott's spokesperson, Andrew Maharis, said the surge today in El Paso is the direct result of the unsustainable chaos President Biden has unleashed at the border. The Texas Military Department and the Texas Department of Public Safety quickly gained control of the situation and are working to repair the damage. These illegal immigrants committed crimes in Texas, and the Department of Public Safety is under instruction to arrest every illegal immigrant involved for committing criminal trespass and destruction of property. Meanwhile, the chaotic scenes at the border seem to just continue to fuel the, the ongoing debate in Washington over how to handle the crisis. The Biden administration has said that it needs more funding, resources, and reforms to overhaul a broken system, which that drives me insane as well when uh, Jean-Pierre and the president says that the system is broken. Who broke it? 
It was working pretty good, Joe Biden, when you assumed the Oval Office. So who broke it? What happened? I think we know the answer to that, don't we? Uh, Senator Tim Scott said yesterday, just in case people are unsure, this is what an invasion looks like. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> That's exactly right. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. Leave a voice message, email joey at joeyhudson.com. What a situation facing Apple. Do you have an iPhone? Maybe an iWatch? Maybe you just you like Mac, uh, Mac computers uh, or, or you have an iPad. I've got some of each. I have uh, an iPhone. I have an iWatch. I have an iPad. I'm actually partial to Windows when it comes to computers and laptops. Apple's facing a wide-ranging antitrust lawsuit from the Department of Justice and 16 state and district attorneys, uh, district attorney generals focused on its dominance in the smartphone market. It, it's pretty astounding some of the charges that the federal government's making. I'm going to tell you all about them in just a minute. First, let me talk with you about that new vehicle. You're looking for a new, new truck, maybe? A new family vehicle? SUV? Furman Ford in Lawrence is where you need to be looking, whether it's a new vehicle or a pre-owned vehicle that you can trust. It's never been important, I think, for us to support locally run businesses owned by people who live here in the community, and that's what you get when you look at Furman Ford. Businesses like Furman Ford, uh, when, when it's time to get your next vehicle or maybe get your current vehicle serviced, choose a local business because they do business the right way. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line. That means when you stop in, you give them a call or you send them an email, you always have access to a member of the Furman family. They'll help you navigate some of the great deals they have. And boy, do they have a great selection. I was down there just a couple of weeks ago uh, talking with Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They probably have the best inventory that I have seen on their lot. You need to take advantage of it. If, you, uh, if you're looking for a new vehicle or a great pre-owned vehicle, go to FurmanFord.com. You can check out all their inventory there, FurmanFord.com. Better yet, just, uh, just head down, uh, give them a visit. You can literally uh, kick the tires and uh, find that new vehicle. If you need service, doesn't matter if it's a Ford or Chevrolet or whatever. They, they, they service all makes and models, and you do not have had to purchase the vehicle at Furman Ford for them to service it for you. FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. This massive lawsuit that the DOJ unveiled yesterday against Apple because, according to Merrick Garland, Apple has limited competition and harmed both consumers and developers through the control of its app store and how its devices and services operate with third parties. Attorney General Garland said Apple has consolidated its monopoly power not by making its own products better, but by making other products worse. Apple pushed back strongly against the allegations in the lawsuit, said the, if the lawsuit is successful, it would hinder our ability to create the kind of technology people expect from Apple where hardware, software, and services intersect. An Apple spokesperson said the suggested changes to how it operates would make the iPhone less useful, less private, and less secure for users. So, so let's just look at a few of the charges that the federal government's making here. And let me tell you up front, I have mixed feelings on this one. Quite honestly, I kind of like my Apple products. I like my iPhone. Now, I don't particularly like the company and some of its policies. I think, I think they're a liberal, woke company. And that's a real dilemma, isn't it? But we have to have technology. We have to have phones. My, our, our phones are our lifeline. And I guess that's where DOJ is coming from because we do depend on our phones so that they're trying to make sure that Apple and companies like Apple give us some options. So here are a few things that uh, that, they're, that Apple's being charged with. This is the basis of 
Merrick Garland's case against them. One of the key allegations that was laid out in the complaint centers on how Apple allows for messaging between users with and without an iPhone. The government accuses Apple of, quote, degrading and undermining cross-platform messaging apps and rival smartphones, chiefly through how users of Apple's message platform can message users without an iPhone. For example, they say, the complaint calls out how Apple shows uh, users a green bubble for text from non-iPhone users in its default messaging app and how it limits the functionality of messages to non-iPhone users through non-encrypted messages, pixelated and grainy videos, and the inability to edit messages or see typing indicators. So if you have an iPhone and you've noticed how some messages look a little different from others, it depends on where it's coming from. If it's coming from an Android device, which is the, the only other competition as far as an operating system, of course, you have multiple manufacturers using the Android operating system, like Samsung and, and, uh, and, and, and many other smartphone users using that same system, whereas with iOS, the Apple operating system, only Apple uses it. The, the complaint alleges that the, through this uh, iPhone messaging, that it signals to users that rival smartphones are lower quality because the, in, the experience of messaging friends and family who do not own iPhones is worse, even though Apple, not the rival smartphone, is the cause of that degraded user experience, the complaint says. The government's complaint adds that many non-iPhone users also experience, uh, now this is where it gets a little far out there, I think, <laughs> that the users experience social stigma exclusion and blame for breaking chats where other participants own iPhones. Now that's a stretch. I got to tell you, yes, I do. I have recognized that when I receive messages from some of my friends who don't have iPhones, yes, it's a different experience, <laughs> but do I think less of my friend because they don't have an iPhone? I've never even thought about it till I read this complaint. Never once has, have I thought about the fact that messages from an Android device look a little, little bit different than a friend who has an iPhone. The complaint also alleges that Apple makes third-party messaging apps on the iPhone worse generally and relative to Apple messages through actions like prohibiting third-party developers from including certain features in their apps that Apple Messages incorporates. They also talk about the iWatch, the, the Apple Watch and, and the relationship to iPhones. This is a, a key component of the government's case against Apple about the exclusive and compatibility of the Apple Watch, which is Apple SmartWatch, and you can only use it with an iPhone. The complaint alleges that Apple uses the costly accessory to prevent iPhone customers from choosing other phones. An Apple Watch costs about seven, eight hundred dollars, I guess. The complaint says Apple recognizes that driving users to purchase an Apple Watch rather than a third-party cross-platform smartwatch helps drive iPhone sales and reinforce the moat around its smartphone monopoly. The complaint cites a 2019 email with the vice president of product marketing for Apple Watch that stated that the watch may help prevent iPhone customers from switching. Well, that's where I, you know, I have mixed feelings on this. D do you, do you blame a co company for trying to make their product better and to make their various products interact with one another better than maybe how they interact with a competitor? I, I, I don't know. Again, I like my iPhone. I like my watch. It, it's, it's a, it's a real, um. Uh, it's a real dilemma for me. Again, I don't care for the company that much, but I like the product. Uh, another complaint that they prevent cross-platform digital wallets. Now, uh, for those of you who do have iPhones, do you use the uh, the your Apple Wallet? It, it's pretty convenient, isn't it? You you buy tickets to a concert or to a sports event, 
You can just drop them right in your Apple wallet. When you get to the, uh, to the door to go in, you pop it right up. They scan it, and you walk in. Same thing with Apple Pay. You, you make any purchase, you never have to pull your credit card out. You just hit the button on the side, and Apple Pay pops up, and it pays it. It's pretty, it's pretty convenient, i got to say. The Apple Wallet incorporates Apple's proprietary payment system, and the complaint says that it lets users make payments using their iPhone, but, but you can't, it doesn't allow non-users to use the same types of apps. The government alleges that Apple envisions that Apple Wallet will ultimately supplant multiple functions of physical wallets to become a single app for shopping, digital keys, transit, identification travel, entertainment, and more. And as users rely on the feature, it would make switching to a different smartphone require setting up an entirely new digital wallet and potentially losing access to certain credits and personal data stored. Therefore, they're holding you hostage is kind of what it's saying. That could be true for a lot of different services, though, couldn't it? I mean, think about uh, the early days of the cell phone. We feared changing carriers because of our phone number. You wanted to keep your phone number. Now, the way it is, it's easy to port a number to another carrier. No big deal. You do it within, within minutes. But early on in the cell phone, for those of you old enough to remember, you, you probably stayed with a cell, uh, cell phone carrier maybe at times when you're getting poor service because you're fearful of going to another carrier. That's kind of what the government's saying. That's what the Department of Justice is saying now with the Apple Wallet. You get all your financial information, all your personal information in there, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you not want to change. But again, is, is that something the government should interfere with? Or is that just the fact that Apple has made the app so good that people like it? People like to use it. Uh, the other complaint is that uh, Apple has blocked super apps or apps that would provide a multitude of many programs. They're claiming that they're blocking certain developers who could create many programs that works whether a user has an iPhone or another smartphone like the ones that are popular in Asian countries right now. It's really sort of a wide open, wide open platform. The super outs would make uh, users rely less on the smartphone's proprietary software and more on the app itself and allow users to be more willing to choose a different smartphone because they would be able to access the same interface and the same apps regardless of the type of phone they have. Uh, one other thing is they say that, that Apple suppresses uh, mobile cloud streaming services, that, that Apple blocked cloud gaming apps that would have allowed users to access uh, other content without needing to pay for an expensive Apple hardware like an iPhone or, or a watch. The complaint says, in Apple's own words, it feared a world where all that matters is who has the cheapest hardware and consumers could buy an a and it's a, an expletive here Android for 25 bucks at a garage sale and have solid cloud computing device that works fine. Again, Apple is being accused of blocking open access to, to other to other apps and, and other cloud streaming apps, which which allows users to run the programs through a network of services that host and deliver the content without having uh, to process or store it on the smartphone itself. Again, I ask you, and, and particularly those of you who have Apple products and use the iCloud, iCloud's pretty convenient. You take photos from your on your iPhone. You don't use up your uh, your phone storage because it automatically uploads it into the iCloud for you. You can access it from anywhere. Eight six four four seven seven Joey. Eight six four four seven seven fifty six thirty nine. Help me out here. I, I really I'm I'm serious. I, I want to get your feedback. Send me a quick note on the Furman Ford text line. Is is this a monopoly or is this just a company that has done well in the products that it makes and, and, and the software and the apps that it has developed to, to, to go along with that iPhone 
or that iWatch or that iPad or whatever the device is that you have purchased uh, from, from Apple. 864-477-5639. Let me, let me hear your thoughts on the Furman Ford text line. Uh, leave a voice message. Email me, joey at joeyhudson.com. On the Furman Ford text line today, Phil had written about the length of the podcast. I, I mentioned it to you yesterday. Uh, Phil noted that some episodes are longer than others. I've explained that I try to keep them between 30 and 50 minutes, and yes, I, I understand that's a pretty wide variance at times. A lot depends on breaking news stories. I ask you to think about what is a good podcast length. I, I want your feedback. Many of you responded, and I thank you for that. I appreciate your input. Uh, if, if you didn't, I'd still love to hear from you. 864-477-5639. Phil added to his previous message, as you may have surmised, he says, I'm an early bird. Much of my work can be tedious taking numbers from source documents and putting them into the proper tax forms. Um, I, I think Phil uh, is an accountant, uh, and some of his prior messages have led me to, to, uh, to think that. Uh, he says, so it was great working and listening to your show. Of course, Phil was a loyal listener to The Morning Answer. He said, personally, I like to work and listen for blocks of time. So Phil liked the three-hour show that uh that I did on the on the morning answer uh and on 94.5 WGTK the answer before Salem Media sold the station I get that and thank you Phil I appreciate your your feedback uh Jeff says about 50 minutes would be great Susan says 40 to 50 minutes and a number of you responded anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes uh, nobody, I don't think, really said more than 50 minutes. I think, I think Jeff, uh, Jeff said about 50 minutes, and that was top. Some, some of you said uh, uh, the range of 40 to 50, but I don't think anyone said more than 50. Again, love to get your feedback. If you didn't chime in yesterday, uh, let me know, 864-477-5639. Christy writes, government is pushing this electric car mess for control of your movement. You buy the electric vehicle, power prices go up, they're already using rolling brownouts and blackouts to control the population in the summer. How many times do we get told to run appliances like dishwashers overnight during low peak hours? They can't handle that much less a national plug-in to try to get to work. Don't try solar either because daily we have chemtrails, not contrails, being sprayed over us to block out the sun. Geoengineering, she says. That's an entirely different issue that needs to be discussed. I was just talking about this with some friends just the other day. Uh, Christy says, we go on and on about how this administration is trying to control the population. Tony writes, Joey, I heard Charlie Kirk talk about the why Democrats want illegals here, and I have to agree. Charlie said it's going to cost us 30-plus seats in the House because, according to him, they're going to be able to vote in November because lots of states don't require ID and because of mail-in ballots. That's a scary thought, for sure. Ray says, Happy Friday, Joey. I was just watching a segment on Newsmax about squatting. As a rental property owner, do you keep up with the South Carolina law on squatting? Can we, as property owners, protect our hard-earned property? I'm afraid this is another example of the loss of the rule of law. Thank God for our Second Amendment, and thank God for always being in control. Uh, Ray, I do keep up with this, and thank goodness in South Carolina, uh, it's a little bit harder to do than some of the cases I'm sure that you uh, have seen and have made national headlines from places like California. Uh, and and i got to be honest here. Um, when you read some of these cases— and you read where someone has been living in a house for a year or two years, and and now they're refusing to leave, i got to think, why would the owner of the house allow them to live there that long anyway? If you're renting a property from me, and I don't want to sound cold here, (laughs) I don't want to sound heartless, uh, but if you're renting from me and... My office has not received your rent by the 5th of the month, which is when it's due. Then you're going to get that first nice little uh, uh, notice from Janice, who works for me. 
reminding you that your rent's due. If we haven't received it by the 10th of the month, then you're going to get another uh, letter from us, uh, another nice little reminder. And if you, ref- unless you have a good excuse, and, and look, again, I'm, I don't want to sound cold. Some people have good excuses. Some people have medical issues. They've lost their job, and we work with them. But the, here, here's the point, though. You're not, you're not going to go months in one of my rental properties and stay there long enough to, 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 to be considered a squatter because we're going to, unfortunately, have to ask you to leave before then. And sometimes, and very seldom, I got to say, I've, I've owned a rental property for, I guess, about well, over 30 years now. And I've only had to legally evict a small handful of people in all that time. And I've had a lot of different tenants c- come through during that period of time. But I have had to evict people before. And our magistrates, all they do, they're, they're very fair. They enforce our law. We South Carolina does have a fair housing act. They, they have a, a landlord-tenant law that is fair to both parties it protects the tenants but it also protects the landlord because they own the property Uh, so ray that was a long answer to to to, uh to your question no you you can't we don't have a problem with squatters in south carolina and thank goodness we don't Faye writes well joy it looks like the republicans don't have a backbone to fight to close the border Very concerning. The ball is in our court for the moment, and it seems to scare the Republicans. Close the government until the border is closed. Close as in walls built. Do they not get how to do their jobs? Uh, I think what Faye is expressing here is, hey, look, if uh, if we if we have to have a government shutdown over funding because because they don't want to close the border or they don't want to uh, to protect our border, so be it. Close the government. Have a, have a shutdown. What do you think? 864-477-5639 is the Furman Ford text line. Our text of encouragement today, success seems to be connected with action. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. God bless. Thank you for that uh, that message. Uh, from the email inbox, this, this is sort of a little funny one that we're going to end on here. Um says $15 per hour. Guy goes into a bar. There's a robot bartender. Since the minimum wage was increased to $15, the owner had to replace his regular human bartender. The robot says, what will you have? The guy says, a martini. The robot brings back the best martini ever and says to the man, what's your IQ? The guy says, 168. The robot then proceeds to talk about physics, space exploration, and medical technology. The guy leaves, but he's very curious. So he goes back into the bar. The robot bartender says, what will you have? The guy says, martini. Again, the robot makes a great martini, gives it to the man and says, what's your IQ? The guy says, 100. The robot then starts to talk about NASCAR, Budweiser, and John Deere tractors. That's what I'd be talking with him about. Uh, The guy leaves, but finds it very interesting, so he thinks he will try it one more time. He goes back into the bar. The robot says, what will you have? The guy says, martini. And once again, the robot brings him another great martini. The robot then says, what's your IQ? The guy says, uh, about 50. The robot leans in real close and says, so you people still happy you voted for Joe Biden? <laughs> Thank you for that email. Uh, your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. You remember the story of the high school student Cameron Blasick? when East Central High School uh, administrators in St. Leon, Indiana, attempted to stop him from displaying the American flag uh, in in the back of his pickup truck earlier this month? Well, the story has a happy ending, and I have that for you right after I tell you about Discounted Appliance Warehouse. You need a new refrigerator? Are you shopping for a new stove, microwave, washer and dryer? Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with up to a seven-year warranty on parts and labor. If you're ready to purchase new appliances, 
Maybe you, you're doing a complete remodel of the kitchen and you need all new appliances. Head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse. And I promise you, you're going to be happy you did. You're going to be happy that you listened to me this time. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. They have nearly perfect reviews on Google. And the team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they have the knowledge you need to have the confidence in your purchase. Appliances are not inexpensive. you got to get it right. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they'll help you do that. They'll show you around their warehouse, over 11,000 square feet, packed full of appliances waiting for you. You're not going to have to wait when you purchase from Discounted Appliance Warehouse. They have an award-winning service department. They have extended warranties, and they've got you covered well beyond the sale because they treat you just like family. Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens and online at dawpickens.com. High school student Cameron Blasick received a patriotic paint job free of charge for his pickup truck after East Central High School administrators in Indiana attempted to stop him from displaying the American flag earlier this month. Blasek, 17 years old, proudly displayed an American flag on his truck for most of his senior year, but Blasek said that school administrators had told him that it broke school rules and it needed to be removed. Uh, He... he, uh, said that he read the rule books or or the handbook in the high school. He said, they told me if you don't remove the flag, you're getting written up for insubordination. I told them, hey, you know, there's no rules or regulations saying I can't. After school uh, uh, administrators tried to block him, um, other students arrived at the school flying American flags as protest, and it became a national news story, went viral. Fast forward to this past week, a business gifted a brand new custom American wrap for the high school senior free of charge. T.J. Badak, he's the owner of a local business there, shared in a statement. He said, we saw Cameron's story and it resonated with us in a lot of ways. The truck was his grandfather's and Cameron is a true American interested in serving in the U.S. military. Blasek is already a, a fan of his new red, white, and blue edition. Uh, they, they posted some photos and I'll tell you, It looks like a new pickup truck, but boy, is it a patriotic truck as well. Beautiful job. Part of the uh, digital custom paint wrap for for Blasek features the quote uh, uh, from the Declaration of Independence. He he still has his American flag, though, he says, and he's proud of his country. He said, I think the American flag represents people who fought and served for this country and lost their lives, but I also think it represents a sense of unity in the country. I think it's something that everybody can agree on, no matter who you are or where you come from or what you like. I think that's something that can bring people together. Uh, Now, the school administrators eventually backed off of the story. Principal Tom Black told the media that it was never about the U.S. flag, that it was regarding all flags on vehicles. He said this is due to potential safety issues with visibility and 500 to 600 teenage drivers leaving at the same time during dismissals, as well as concerns that flags are not appropriate for school that are displayed there in the the school parking lot. After consultation with the superintendent, however, uh, Black did say that it was not that this law did not target the U.S. flag and allowed this young man to continue to fly his flag. If you uh, have a chance, go online, and maybe I'll post it on my website at joeyhudson.com. What a great job and a beautiful truck. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Hey, I appreciate you joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. And speaking of my website, joeyhudson.com, if you haven't joined our mailing list, visit, click on Connect with Joey so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Find me on YouTube. Just search for Joey Hudson. Send uh, a quick text if you have trouble with that, and I'll send you the link. And one final thing. I always ask you to help me out with this. Refer a friend to Just the Truth. As soon as you finish finish uh, listening to this episode, hit the share button. Send it to to everybody on your contact list, but at least two or three people, and ask them to join our Just the Truth family. Keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. Keep your emails coming as well, joey at joeyhudson.com. 
We're back next week. Hope you'll plan to join us. Have a wonderful weekend. Until then, remember, folks, God's got this. He's still in control.